Okay, like, so we're just continuing off our last topic, which was, um, like, I guess, what, what would you call this worry? Like, just afraid for just the future of Elder well, Scrolls? The thing or just is, the is no. because... Well, I guess it's about... No, I guess I was wrong about the amount of time between Fallout games. Because it, it usually kind of goes Fallout, or Skyrim, Fallout, Fallout. Because Elder Scrolls Online, I don't... Like, that's, that's, the, like, that's the thing. Bethesda is trying to appeal to the online spectrum. They're trying to they're trying to brand. They're trying to extend their reach as a company, and I understand as to why. But when you you don't like, I don't think they had the exact same team as they did working because actually for Fallout seventy six they did. They had they had Bethesda Austin as their primary focus of development. That's like the, okay. the like I'm pretty sure it's the Austin, Texas. Uh, development chain. Not to say that they're what they do is bad or anything. I'm just saying that there's like it probably wasn't the same guys that did all for like any of the other ones and stuff. Okay. It's, I'm not entirely sure. Then again, I don't know. This is, I'm just rambling on at this point. But what it seems to me is that they put, from what I've seen before, as, at least, is that they put a lot more effort into Elder Scrolls titles than they do with Fallout. Then again, not seen with Elder Scrolls Online. But then again, there is a question. The thing is. There's still there's still fans that enjoy Elder Scrolls Online, and they're still they're still making content for it. I'm gonna pull that up. Actually. So here's an interesting question: Why you do that? Okay. So would you say that Fallout seventy six was a better attempt at doing uh, Bethesda with friends, Bethesda games with friends, than Elder Scrolls Online? Well, that's the thing. Elder Scrolls Online. Elder Scrolls Online is like. It seems like a low budget version of, of Skyrim. Like it just seems like a. It, like I don't know. If it doesn't budget feel right. the same. It's because it doesn't it's, look the same. It's, it's because it doesn't it's, play the same. What are you doing? It's because it's an MMO though. What is it? Uh, it's an MMO be, before yeah. it's a, um, before it, it's anything else, right? It's right. built like an MMO, and as a result of being a legitimate MMO with lots of players, it has to take graphical hits, right? Like WoW is not a photorealistic game. It's like that because it can't be, right? Or else it would be, right? Yeah. So. That's why, right? But would you say? But a lot of people like just wanted Skyrim with friends, and that's why a lot of people were looking. See, the thing is, is that a lot of people were looking forward to Skyrim with friends. That's why they did ESO, right? But when it came out, people didn't. A lot of people didn't think that that's what it was. Would you say that Fallout seventy six was a better attempt than ESO? See, the thing is, in to a certain extent, I feel like I mean I'm more able. Like, honestly, if I picked up Fallout 76, I'd probably be able to play it a little bit longer and not want to kill myself rather than... Rather like, than ESO? Than the ESO. But that's because I feel like it works better and it's it, it feels more like the game that it's... Like, it's yeah. predecessor. And I really like Fallout 4. It was not as good as previous Fallout games. It's, it's not as good as New Vegas, uh, everyone says. It's like, you hold these games, such the high titles. If you hold these games to such these expansive expectations that... Overly, like, people say it's like, fucking New Vegas is the best follow-up. It's like, and everything it does is perfect. It's like, that's wrong. Not everything in that game is perfect. There's no way. There's no way. Really it's, perfect, it's right? not, not just from the game stance, but there's nothing... Not every single thing in that game was amazing. I didn't think the story was all that intricate and inclusive to me. Like, to me, it didn't really... F I, don't, I don't really know. Like, So, when you hold these games and you blow the expectations out of it for the games and like, this game is perfect and then you hold the next title to be the exact same thing it's not even, even though there's years between some people leave other people take their place and it's just like it's a it's a company is an organism that is constantly mo like expanding changing and morphing it's never going to be you're never going to have the same the same exact people working on the same exact thing and you're never going to have the same kind of synergy that you had before it's why game, it's why some sequels are worse than others. It's why other games that are made by the same people are are like better or worse. It's just, it just makes sense that way. But the reason is like you're gonna lose all of your excitement when you see the game that it's not to what you what you hold these ungod these godly games to be like. You're gonna get disappointed anyways. It's the same thing with Star Wars. It's like. We, like you hold these they're part of your childhood you think you're going to go into that theater and instantly reignite your childhood but you're not it's like all these people that dislike the like the the sequels are like well the prequels suck the only good movies are the first and second one and clone wars that's it it's like well how can you justify being a star wars fan if you hate literally 90 percent of the content that comes up by it 
Yeah, sure. I don't necessarily like. I don't like the first one all that much, but there's some cool aspects that I like. I don't like Clone Wars. You're talking about the prequels right now. Yeah. Okay. I don't like Attack of the Clones all that much. I liked Revenge of the Sith. It wasn't like it wasn't the best Star Wars movie, but this is the thing. If all these movies like they all have flaws in their ways, like literally, like El- uh, Star Wars is a flawed piece of media. It has problems. Everything. But it's just like some of these, like the old movies, just get a pass because they're part of the childhood. It's like, yeah, the same things literally happen in the in the sequels that happened in the fucking original trilogy. Yeah. Nothing is perfect. Right? Nothing is perfect. But the thing is, is like some people that just like they just need to realize like you're not going to be able to reignite your childhood. I'm saying that Elder Scrolls Six is probably not going to be like I'm not entirely. I'm not. I have no idea. I we know nothing as a staple of what this what this game is going to be about. We have no idea what you're going to be doing. We have no idea what area you're going to be in. You have, you, we know nothing. And right now, I think it's a little bit too early to start drawing conclusions that this game might be a disappointment because we have years until it comes out. Yeah. Years. But the only thing is that if they do not address the problems that are like corrupting their current games, yeah. then history it, can, oh, yeah. can it, and probably will repeat itself. It like, will, yeah. If they do not at least do some sort of upgrades to their current engine, but the thing is, it's going to have similar problems if they try to continually... Because I think a lot of times, it's like Bethesda games are like an organism, like a virus, not in the sense of that they're bad, but in the sense that they try to constantly grow scope, grow scope, and constantly get bigger. Yeah. Like Fallout 76 being four times the size of Fallout 4. Why does it need to be that big? I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but as a result of trying to have such you big have chops, all these can, things can, spread can, out too much. Yeah, but as a result of having such big chops, it can lessen the quality of your game. What if you if have they a made smaller it? area, this is yeah. the thing. It's like with a game, some games, like some games come out. Like I take it into consideration. Like imagine that game is a cup of water. You have, you have that cup of water. Some some game developers have a little bit more than you. Some of them have a little bit less. But like the thing is, if you try to take that cup of water and you spill it into a larger bucket you're going to have a little bit less depth to it so you're going to have to sacrifice uh scale to quality. to quality so the long the bigger you make it the less time you're going to have to really throw like really get dig deep into that bucket and make yeah. it deeper so the fact that you have a regular size cup that's filled to the brim and it's arguably not all that big and it's pretty deep that just goes to say something like yeah. Because I was watching this. You have to have a perfect. You have to like it's. A, you have to have a perfect scale of either like fifty fifty or forty sixty or sixty forty. Like yeah. it, it's it's like it's right in that sweet spot fifty fifty or in the forty sixty range. It's, that's yeah. in my opinion is the sweet spot. I was watching this video a little bit ago that talked about the problem with open world games and the fact that they're always trying to go for scale so much. Yeah. And uh, this guy brought up this one game that came out on PC way back when, and it was called Gothic, and he said. Um, and he compared it to Oblivion. He said, when I played Oblivion, if you asked me to dr- draw your map and tell you where to go, I would have no idea because so many places kind of feel similar and like look the same where there's so yeah. much open space. But he's like, if you told me to draw you or a map of Gothic, he said he'd be able to draw you a map of the game Gothic by hand because each place was so unique. What if instead of trying to make Fallout 4's map four times bigger for Fallout 76, you put four times the amount of stuff in Fallout 4's map? Yeah. Wouldn't that be just a crazy idea? I mean, Skyrim's map is... Not as big as Fallout. I don't think it's as big as Fallout Four, is it? I don't the thing know. is, it, you have to like. W- w- in big. my opinion, I l- I love Skyrim. Skyrim is probably is my game? favorite is my it, favorite video game, game of all time in the RPG fantasy realm. Is the world just oozes life? It's just like literally all t- like sh- there's the fast travel mechanic. Sometimes with a new playthrough, I don't even bother doing that. I I walk to every area because it's like. Yeah, sure. Like when you get later in the game, when you've been to so many places, so many times, that fast travel mechanic—that's what it's for. But like the first moments of having nothing discovered, and you can only see in certain areas of the map, and you're just walking through. Sometimes you're not even following a path; you're just going up the side of fucking mountains and shit. You're just—you're not following the, the 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 actual path to get there at all, and you end up why not discovering these things that like fucking like random dragon attacks and just like dungeons and caves and animals that attack you and raider camps and stuff it's like that's what honestly what drives me to keep playing the game is to find that next thing and in skyrim it really works because this world is believable to what it is and when i when i make my journey from helgen and i start that area and i get to riverwood and i'm talking to people and they're worried about the dragon attack i'm getting help from like one of the either the people that you pick for your friend that you escape from the city from 
from, from the town and you make your way past Riverwood, you're taught, you're selling all the stuff you have, you're moving on, you get to White Run. Once you get to White Run, you're like, this is amazing. And you're doing all you're doing all these quests and then after a while it's like sometimes the story doesn't grip you as much as it should. I, it would be great if it did, but sometimes it really Bethesda's game's main story lines sometimes aren't the most impactful thing and do not have you sitting on the edge of your seat it's every moment. Like, it's not like playing The Last of Us or something like that. You know, or, yeah, or, or, or because or that game is a, is a story-based game first. Third-person shooter, survival game. Like It's like, this is like, it's for, story first, shooter, s- survival, and then it's, the because the, the, the game is not an open-world game, right? No, I don't believe so. I haven't I played it, but I'm pretty sure I, it's I pretty, it, I'm, so. I'm quite sure it's pretty linear. But, there you go. Like it's more interesting to explore these areas, but the thing that the staple thing for Elder Scrolls is to be able to go. Sometimes I don't really want to do the main quest. You have these abundant amount of side quests to do, and that was kind of it was in Fallout Four, but I didn't really feel all that connected to it. They really they mar- they what is, what's the term? Uh, not, they made it linear, but not modular. No. Is that what you're no. What are you talking about? They. Uh, it's like when they take a highly technical game and they downscale it to make it so like lots of people can play it. Oh, the dumbed it down? They kind of, no, not, not necessarily Simplify? calling it. Kind of. Streamline. Streamline. They yeah. kind of streamline, streamline that a bit because they try to make, I, I'm kind of getting lost in thought here. They try to open like it up to a bigger audience they could sell more, kind of. Kind of, yeah, but like honestly, Fallout, th- this is kind of like the problem with Fallout to me, is that Fallout 3, I loved Fallout 3 at the time, Fallout 3 was a great game, and it's still a great game. It has some bugs and problems, like all Bethesda games do. The map, like, the layout of the map was non-existent. Yeah, I like, do believe... When I'm in an area in Skyrim, I know exactly where the fuck I am. Not because I played more, but because it's, you literally see more. With Fallout 3, and even New Vegas, it's like, you're in this big, open, destroyed area with buildings everywhere that like, look the same wherever you go. And it's like, none of this place looks interesting to me. So I have no idea where I'm you at. You could say that's how far they've come in terms of how they make games. Because yeah, um, I've played it managed to do better. countless hours in both games. Because I think that Fallout 4 definitely holds your hand more. Than but the, the thing other is, Fallout, Fallout 4 has a much more Fallout 4 felt very, very more easily for me to get into it had than Fallout a, New Vegas. When, Fallout New, when I played Fallout New Vegas, I haven't, I haven't played more than like two hours of it. But like immediately, once you get into the game, like, okay, where do I go You know, to get weapons, blah, blah, blah. How do I, oh, I can re- get, I gotta repair things, but it did, didn't, I don't remember telling you much of anything, whereas Fallout yeah. 4 kind of gives you a lot more like instruction. Yeah. So it kind of helps to baby. And then also, they kind of were a bit more cinematic with the fact of you giving you a minigun and power armor right away. Yeah. Which was kind of, it was it felt cool cause it's like, because it's like, yes, I have this cool thing. When you add things, when you start, because like every single time Bethesda makes a game, they, they start from scratch from with the engine and they build the world that way and they start up from, so you're put, you have to put in the exact amount of time it took to make that game and still have to have these little cuts in time where you have, so this is the thing, a game, like when you start off at a game, think of it as a, a slice of bread. It's, it's like, it's going to be the same correlation with the cup of water thing. You have a certain amount of bread. And you're making that bread like your loaf, but when you want to take those air or sorry, think of it, yeah, back to the water thing. Forget the bread thing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sick right now. I don't know what the fuck I'm going on with. But th- think of the water when you want to kind of change the walls of the cup a bit to expand upon some certain areas. You're gonna have to give up a little bit of that water to go into those areas. And your water being in this case time and development cost. So when you want these areas. When you want these certain things to be really expanded upon, like that, in my opinion, that was the main problem with the with the older Fallout games is that I did the world, the area that I walked around in, that, I, that the game took place was uninteresting to me, and just seemed like it was just thrown together in an afternoon. Like, it's not that bad. I, it's not actually that bad, but it just it did not hold the same captivity as going through even Oblivion's map is not as is not as interesting to me. It looks good. And it feels good, but it's just like I have no idea where I'm in, and I put in the same amount of hours in the Skyrim. Skyrim is like I, I know put, where I, I think am. You put more hours in the Skyrim. I have because that's, in my opinion, I think it's one of the better ones they put out. And they have, they did streamline some of the things, but that was to sacrifice to, because you do have to make sacrifices when you're making a game. You have to put some more time into other things 
and you have to ignore some other things. So one of the main problems, in my opinion, with the older, even Fallout games was the map. Was the map was an interesting. I'm kind of rambling on, I'm kind of repeating things, but besides the point. So what they did with Skyrim is they really made that map an interesting place and it felt like a real area to explore. All these, because Oblivion was just a bunch of rolling hills, a few mountains here and there, a few towns, and, and some water. It was mostly like very calm, like there wasn't no big fucking steep so, okay, ass so you're hills saying and it, shit. It was a lot of uh, really like it kind of bl like bled into the same kind of areas. Like there wasn't a whole lot of variation. It, it felt like the same area I've been in. It's just like I just have different locations that are. But there like, wasn't enough. Like variation. it feels like it felt like Oblivion was just a pre-rendered area with a bunch of hills and stuff and lakes and areas. Yeah. In Skyrim, they really like. It's almost like they hand they it. they handcrafted that map. Ergo, by the amount of mountains and hills and areas, it's like nothing exists on the same plane like oh, in Oblivion. Like, Oblivion, some areas on top of hills, some areas in a valley. It's just like, blah, blah, blah. and Skyrim is like, you got these fucking, like, it's just like rocky, like, it's just rocks and mountainscapes and all this. It's a completely different area. And it does make sense as to why they went that area because, like, they couldn't make Skyrim like Oblivion because it's not the same area. It makes sense for them not to. But I like what they, like, because I do remember, so they had if this, you, when you go to, no, uh, just let me finish what, my point, just one second. I thought you were done. No. Oh, okay. It's the reason why they had to sacrifice some of the more, like, role-playing things in Skyrim and Fallout 4 is because they wanted to make that area a lot more interesting to be in. And they wanted to kind of give, the, like, the, they had, you have to sacrifice some areas, so that's kind of my point. The reason why Fallout 4's map is better than Fallout 3 in New Vegas is because, in my opinion at least, is because they have to have a lot more stuff in it for your character to do. And it's a lot more interesting to go constantly from area to area in a nice, dense, little, like a... It's the same, it's bigger, but they have more stuff in it because they had to sacrifice much other stuff. But in Fallout, literally Fallout New Vegas is just a fucking huge-ass desert with fuck all in it. There's areas in it, and there's some interesting areas, but most of the time it's just a big fucking desert. And it's a cool, it's a cool, it's, it is a good game. And this is like the same thing with Fallout 3. It's like I feel like New Vegas is better than Fallout 3 in some aspects of Fallout 3. is better than New Vegas in some areas. It's like what I really find appealing about Fallout is the vaults and that kind of story. So with New Vegas stepping away from that was kind of like was kind of like a cold step away and I didn't really like it all that much. I was like, I, I like this stuff though. I like being a vault dweller that's discovering the world again rather than being already in this world and my character having lost his memory and stuff. It's like, yeah, okay. And I'd much rather prefer like that stuff. But with Elder Scrolls, it's like they make knowledge to your character having previous like stuff in Skyrim and like in other areas. Like your character has had history before in other areas, but they don't acknowledge it at all. And it's just like your literally your story starts from here. It's like you don't know anything about Frodo and Bilbo's life before the events of Lord of the Rings. You have no idea what it is. You know, not, you pretty much know nothing about because it, it wasn't important. Their story, and a story is different from a life, like a lifeline, a life is different from a story. A life is like, I had, like this stuff happens. All in, in, my, in my opinion, my story would start probably, if, if, I, if my life was a movie, the, the movie would start probably in two years. That's when, it, like, nothing really impactful has happened here. I, this would probably be the areas where you see some flashback stuff. So your story starts whenever the interesting stuff has, starts to happen, and then then your life kind of puts to an end, you know? It's like... This probably doesn't make any sense, does it? I think so. I, I'm kind of... I'm kinda, just... I'm, I'm fucking... My brain is I'm kind of... I'm kind of... I'm a little bit tired. It's that time in college life right now. Yeah. Like wrapping up the semester, kind of. But um, to mm -hmm. drive my point home, I think that it does worry me that they're using the same engine, but they're not using the it's not the, going to be the exact same thing just with a Skyrim skin or like an Elder Scrolls skin on it they're they're going to be changing things they're going to be adding things they're going to be taking some things away they're going to be fixing things so when you say it's going to be the same engine you are correct but it's like it's like you can have two meals you can have a steak dinner on one side and a steak dinner on the other side then it's technically the same meal but other people make them differently there's going to be different yeah. ingredients that they throw yeah. in and just like it's the same meal but sometimes other ones can be better than the exact same thing. So it's like, it's hard to say that these things are going to be cut, copy, same thing. This game's going to be fucking terrible because the one that predecessed before it was terrible. Yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna link that video in the description there, the one where it talks about how um, it uses the same uh, constructor but not the same 
engine necessarily because the constructor is not an engine, but it might use the same engine. I'm not sure, but anyway. Yeah. So hopefully, um, they do. Because I imagine, like, because they are professionals. I don't. I don't to a degree, they, all these companies should know what they're doing to a certain extent, so they should have a product that is able to perform yeah. reasonably well. Like, I, I don't think Todd Howard's just going to say, okay, we're just going to put out a broken game because who cares? I don't think he's going to pull something like that. Like, why would he? It'd be a terrible idea. But uh, hopefully it's, like, functions better, and uh, hopefully it'll be kind of a new wave of... Uh, potentially less buggy games, even though that a lot of people have grown to love a lot of the bugs, but it'd be nice to see something that at least doesn't suffer from engine aging, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, that, that'd be, that'd be nice. And when you're talking about, um, level design in Skyrim, I, one thing I remember distinctly is how, like, you, when you have White Run, it's like your little town in, in the, in the, in the valley, and then when you go to, like, Hammerfell, and it's, like, kind of almost reminds me of, like, a dwarven mine or something. In Hammerfell? The, yeah, oh, yeah, right, right. like it's like ingrained into the mountain, and I love that that flow of environment, like, like how it's, it's certain it's areas dip ooze different types of oh very different oh like yeah. I love every single area in Skyrim. There's not a single area where I go, well, this kind of sucks. The only area that is is more or less boring to me is kind of the throat of the world because it's just a mountain. There's nothing really there. To, it's to, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It is really cool. And the same thing with uh, Windhelm. It's like, it's a really cool area, but it just feels like it's missing something that is key. Just get a mod for it. <laughs> yeah, but in Fallout 4, it's like, what's a cool area that you that you like going? Diamond City's kind That's of That's like the main cool. hub of the game. Yeah. I mean, literally, on the map, it's like literally almost in the exact middle of the map. And I also think that your little settlement area could be kind of cool. Well, I think, well, the nice That's thing about Fallout 4... That's because you make that your own. No, I was just going to say that. That's the nice thing about Fallout 4 is you can make... Your yeah. cool areas, but, but it's that still building mechanic limited. is still really, it's, it's still not quite, very good. It's still limited. I it's I enjoy I enjoyed good. it a lot, but I understand yeah. You it's put still a limited. lot of blood, sweat, and tears in the in the making your fucking base some really cool stuff, and even then, it's not to the extent that it is. It's not like you made it with the creator engine or whatever. It's not like it's a fu it's a fully polished area. Like it, it looks, out, it kind of looks a little out of place because yeah. everything has to be in a square. I'm it's still like, very glad that they still put that mechanic in. Very glad. Yeah. It helps to feel a bit more yours. Uh, oh, it doesn't. The it castle, doesn't, it the fucking. It's terrible. The castle on pretty PC, cool. On the with PC controls, like trying to build with PC controls is like atrocious, because it, like you have to constantly take your hand off the mouse to hit enter and shit. It's like I don't mind it, but like, yeah, I can. I can. I can. But see it's kind of. But on a controller, and I will say it's way better to play any game, most games, on a keyboard and mouse. But when you're building in Fallout Four, you have to have the controller, or you're gonna tear your hair out because. It's a lot easier to. I think it's just what you're used to. But because I didn't find it that big. But I just think it's just. It's, it's just I, yeah. I just hate Another it. place is the castle. That was a pretty cool place. But the thing, again, it's just an empty area with nothing in it. In which you fill with what you like and yeah. make it your own. I see what you're saying. And it's like, they're really trying like to drive that point home yeah. and really justify having it there in the first place. That base belt, because base building belongs in Fallout, honestly, because you're in this post-apocalyptic world. All these cities and areas are just places that have been refurbished and built up with crap. But in Elder Scrolls, it doesn't make any sense because the only areas that are that you build yourself is that is like when you get the homestead, like your houses in that and Hearthfire DLC, and the only other area that people that like NPCs build up and recreate are dungeons, which they just they just live in because there's really nothing else they can live in. They can't live in cities because they'll get fucking arrested and shit and they'll get killed, or they live in these old abandoned ass. Uh, like orcs. Who are they that you're talking about? The orcs? The bandits. Oh, the bandits, yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of correlations with Fallout and Skyrim. For a while, I like. Also, here's another thing: is that some some of the like, I I'm, I'm really excited for Starfield. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be cool. I'm going to look at... I, I'm not really yeah. sure. Because Starfield seems like it's going to be like... I, I imagine they're going to take some of the stuff that they learned from making Prey. and But I don't know if it's the same studio. Like, it's Bethesda Games, but different people within the studio work on different things probably, right? So it's like, I don't know if... Oh, uh, here it is, right here. Oh, this... Oh, this gameplay. Oh, maybe we'll try to... 
RG video for my channel. Okay, I'll link that in okay, the description. Okay, we'll, we'll not watch the funny video because it's... Yeah. No, yeah, we'll just talk about what we think, but I'll but probably link it in the description. Prey had a really cool concept. It was like... It was, it was really... Like, yeah, it was kind of going back... Horror. It was kind of going back to... Like, like a Bioshock... Classic space horror. Uh, Half-Life type of game, where it was just like... I, the pacing wasn't super fast, and it didn't... It was really be. interesting... And, I don't know, if but it was just—it felt like the difficulty. Like I don't know about, I, like I don't know about you, or anyone else, but I found that like, I got to a certain area, like a certain part in the game, where I was like, just after just, I literally just like ran away or barely killed anything in that game. In in Bioshock? In uh, Prey. I have because played. I feel like the weapons that I was given, or the things that I had did not have nearly enough ammo or damage to kill anything. And I guess it's what you're trying to give is like, well, it's an alien species. Like, it's just like, they're not from this, like, this realm or whatever. So they're going to be hard to kill. It's like, yeah, but if I'm constantly just having to not want to deal with any enemy in your game, and I'm hiding, and I'm just running away, and kind of breaking the game that way, like I'm just ignoring everything, every enemy in the game, until I'm forced to, that's kind of bad game design. I think what it is is it's just different game design than what we're used to. Yeah. Because what it is is they're trying to instill a sense of fear, right? Which is what the game's about. Like you're the prey in the game, right? Yeah. And so it's I, it reminds me of Alien Isolation where, like, it, in this it's a bit better because you actually can kill things. It's just much harder. Whereas in Alien Isolation, I, I, I haven't played you can it. Just, you can just but push you, it back but, with a flamethrower. Yeah, but like as far away. as I know, you can't kill the alien, or at least not right initially. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I haven't, I've only seen a little bit of gameplay, but... Anyway, so it's trying to instill that sense of fear because you cannot just go and kill everything easily, yeah. you know. And so it's a different. It's just not one of those games. And, that I and, it, and it can, yeah, and that's fine. And it can slow down the gameplay a little bit too, and that, that could be for better or for worse. But I think it's kind of nice to have that variation where not everything is just a one-man army. Yeah. Where you can easily take everything down, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna look up quickly. Look up the list of Bethesda games that recently came out. When hopefully Starfield will be a breath of fresh air. Uh, <laughs> Wolfenstein was really good. Here's I, I, I really liked like Wolfenstein. I, th I thought so, it, that Wolfenstein was a good way to go back to more classic. Doom 2016 yeah. was fucking phenomenal. I loved that game. Still do. It's very well made. It's re very reminiscent of the old Doom games. It's a perfect reboot of the series. Here's something. I just saw this game there. I really loved Brink. I love a lot. I know I have heard that some people didn't like Brink, but I love that game. When I played that, oh, I love the customization. I love the just even though the multiplayer is kind of one dimensional, I love that game. <laughs> it was kind of like I don't know, like I, the parkour and so everything. I just I loved it. I then played Wolfenstein, the twenty four, the, the New yeah. Order. I, I, that game was pretty good. I couldn't really. I I tried to play Dishonored. Now apparently Dishonored, like Dishonored is really good. Yeah, I like Dishonored. I haven't played the second. I game. couldn't really play. I couldn't get. Past, I don't know if I was just bad at the game or I just really didn't. I wasn't like interested in it at all. And then Dishonored two came out, and I never paid any attention to that. Uh, Wolfenstein two came out, really and good. I hated that game. Really, I fuck what, like it had some it? really cool aspects of it. What'd you but, hate about it? I just couldn't fucking play it because the shaky cam was terrible. Shaky, like, I don't remember you walk cam. and literally your character's like fucking jumping around the damn screen. I'm just like, oh my god, like am I fucking, maybe I'm getting older. I, I don't was know. Just no, I don't know. That day. Maybe I don't know. your frame rate was weird. No, I was playing, it was at 60 frames. And it was uh, the same, like Wolfenstein. I played it, there was none. There was none. It was just a basic ass first person shooter. Well, it wasn't basic, but I mean, there was no, I hate when games throw the screen effects at you with like film grain and motion blur and screen shakiness and shit. It's like, just let me, Fuck, like, look. There's a reason why we play games instead of doing that in real life. Is because in real life it sucks. It's like when you try to emulate real life in a game, it, it looks even it, worse. It, it, it feels janky and bad. And like in VR, is like some some games in VR they really try to make it so that you don't feel motion sickness at all. It's like some games do it better than others. Like most games, they have like whenever you start to move, like a little like UI, a little black thing comes in, to just let you know that you are moving. So your your brain like try to trick your brain. Mm -hmm. I find that really fucking stupid, so I took all that off. And like, so like, it's a video game for a reason. Like, if you try to, I mean, if these games that get really realistic, aren't fun because the part point of the game is like part of the game is to be able to kind of escape real life and not be playing real life. Yeah, 
And so then when you make it too realistic, but at the same time, sometimes real life simulations can be fun, like Arma, but at the same time, they can get really old really like, fast sometimes. I feel like, like no, I haven't played Red Dead. Yeah. I haven't played Red Dead 2 yet. I really want to, but I feel like even sometimes, like, uh, what some people are really getting at with the game that kind of pisses them off is how, like, how realistic it is. Is like, there's no fast travel mechanic. I, that I, w- I have to say from it's like you're in this big fucking right now, world yeah fa- no fast travel is very annoying I know, you know what salts the wound even more at least in Red Dead Redemption 1 um, when you whistle no matter where you were your horse would spawn in in Red Dead 2 no you have to be close enough yeah and so then you have to walk either yeah. steal a horse you have to walk all the way to where your horse is whistle get on it then go and then yeah. you still can't fast travel yeah I haven't played it so I don't really know exactly what it looks like or feels like but from what I've seen it's just like your horse it's cool that your horse will get tripped up and can get shot sometimes too easily though but it's like you put all this effort into it's like if in GTA you got a car and like you got a car and you upgraded it all the time you got like full max level you got it up all the way like you max out the armor the speed the engine quality you got a new stick paint color and it blows up, and then you can never have that car back. It's like, that's what happens. Your your horse dies, that's it. Start back from scratch. Yeah, like, there was one time where I just was messing around. I rode my horse over a waterfall. It died, and it died, died. Like, it just showed the saddle was there on the ground or whatever, I think. And then, so I was like, oh, crap, and I realized I didn't make a previous save point, so I literally had to throw a stick of dynamite at the ground and hope for the best. Luckily, when I loaded my last save, I had my horse. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then I immediately made a save file. Yeah. Or else it would uh, have been, and that was like a free horse that I got that was as good as like a hundred dollar horse or whatever it was from the stable. So that would have been a loss. Yeah. Uh. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Thief was a Bethesda game. You know, it's funny because Thief, a lot of people hated it. I understand why. I liked the atmosphere. Oh, I fucking I this game pissed me. Maybe because I played it on the Xbox 360. I played it on but I just felt like the game I did not fucking like ugh. I know why there people hate it because there's not about. there's not enough depth to it apparently the story is bad or the game the story it's just like the gameplay is just fucking uninteresting as hell well and also I think it would have been a game that would have benefited from having an open world rather than a linear story to it did it not have an open world no it just it's trying to I guess it tries to simulate that with it's campaign but you know what I mean like I think it was a kind of game it felt it reminded me a lot of Dishonored which is a good thing in terms of how it played and how it moved. But I loved the atmosphere it created. The atmosphere was like a gritty, you know, uh, Victorian London, yeah. which I, I like, and I like the idea of being a thief in that era. It's cool, but it didn't do a good enough job, and I only played like a few missions of it. But what I played, I liked the atmosphere of, but yeah. it's like it wasn't enough, I guess. Doom, getting back to the topic of Doom, is that I was when I first saw that Doom Eternal was coming out, I was really excited. And after watching, I'm still excited. I just maybe I'm I don't know what it is, but like I just don't really feel like it would be the first game we grab. Oh, the new Doom, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I would rather get Elder Scrolls than Doom. That's because it is a bigger game. I'm I'd probably game. choose Elder Scrolls just because I'm familiar with Elder Scrolls, and you could probably get more out of Elder Scrolls because Doom is linear, right? Yeah. Whereas really Elder Scrolls always is open world and with mods and stuff, you always do all these extra things. So you're gonna get more money worth money's worth in the long run out of an Elder Scrolls game probably. Yeah. 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 So this is essentially this whole discussion is basically re- revolving around the fate of Bethesda. Right? Like where, right they, now where they go now. Because I think Bethesda, like from my experience at E3, I think Bethesda had the best press conference because they had a lot of, all their also, games were their own and it all looked quite good and they let the community in. They seem to be still doing what Bungie did right in its early days, which was focusing on community and like actually, actually the, connecting also with the Also, again, they kind of are disregarding community because they're throwing <coughs> these fucking stupid ass microtransaction based mods that are just ripping off other made mods and kind of spitting in your face a bit. But that got removed, didn't it? No, it's still here. Oh, it's still there? Okay, so then this is the interesting... We're at a very interesting point in time, because we're at the tipping point between when Bungie was awesome and when Bungie became less awesome. Bethesda might suffer the same fate, right? Right. So we're in an interesting kind of pivotal moment. Mm -hmm. 
And so it is a I dark day for gaming here. right now. I was gonna talk. This is one of the things I want to talk about. It feels like right now, like you know how when you were younger and you missed a game and it was like, oh crap, I don't have the money for that right now. I'm really missing out. I don't really feel like that. I feel like right I'm, I feel like I I'm feel not like, missing out on anything. I feel like as long as I have, yeah, I feel like as long as I have Red Dead and I get Smash Bros, everything else is just kind of meh. Right. Like if I have the money, sure, get Battlefield Five. But all I see, I wouldn't buy. All I see, or I'll get Battlefield Five, get Black Ops Four, whatever. If I have the money, you know, I'm saying if I have the money. But if I have to be choosy, I'm like. Black Ops 4 can wait. You know even, what I mean? Even if I had the money, I wouldn't spend money on Black Ops 4 or Battlefield 5. It's just like, I wouldn't want to give money. I don't yeah. want to spend money on these games that I know I'm not going to enjoy for very long. Because this is the trend right now. It feels like the, the commonplace on YouTube is all you do is see these videos that are like, will this game suck? Uh, the, the things that are wrong about this. You know, why is this game so bad? You see some videos that's like, why is this game so awesome? Blah, blah, blah. But that's usually a few games here and then most of the games that came out in the past. Yeah. Right? Like, when it was the glory days of Call of Duty, when it was the glory days of Battlefront, you know? Yeah. But now it seems like just a lot of stuff is just kind of either half done, uh, screwing over the community with microtransactions, or just not good. Mm -hmm. And it seems like as if people are either forgetting how to make good games or forgetting what makes an actual game... Or they're just trying to just so blatantly make money. I kind of wish that just for the sake of giving us a little bit of intelligence, we'd just straight up front ask us for all of our money. Like I feel that that almost would be more respectable than all this like cramming. I know that sounds stupid. And obviously, no one's going to do that. But I, I literally just think they're basically just saying. EA is basically just saying. Can you please give care. us? Can you please give us all of your money? Thank you. That's basically like I think ideally that's what they want. Even though that would be terrible because nobody would have any money to buy any more other stuff because of, you know they. I have no way to continue to make money. That's like, it's so sad. Right, you know I mean? It's so sad being a gamer right now. It's like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm not missing out on anything. And so many times back in the day, it's just like, oh. I, I feel like, oh, I'm missing out on this so bad because I don't have the money for it. Yeah. And then when I finally do, I'm like, oh my god, I, I, I'm, I'm fucking so glad I finally got it. I can get this game now. It's like Modern Warfare 2 days. And know? then when you play it, it's like, I, I understand what I'm missing out on. Yeah, early Halo days, early Modern Warfare 2 days. Right now, I feel like I'm missing out stuff. on nothing except for Red Dead 2. That's it. And yeah, and then, like, the games that I'm hopeful for, but like this is funny because normally I have so many games I'm looking forward to getting. Usually there's always an Assassin's Creed and stuff like that. I'm not saying I wouldn't get Assassin's Creed, but I find it doesn't pull in me as much as it used to anymore. Even though it, it still looks cool that they've actually innovated, it doesn't pull me as much. But right now it's like literally my upco look forward to upcoming games Smash Bros, Death Stranding, Kingdom Hearts 3. That's all they come to mind I'm, right now. Otherwise, everything else is just kind of like, okay. Oh, and I'm Rage not... 2. That's like, and Borderlands 3. But Borderlands 3 isn't even really confirmed. It's like kind of confirmed, but not really. You know what I mean? So it's like four games in the next year. I'm intrigued by Death Stranding. I just have faith in it because I know it's going to be Kojima. I have faith in the fact that it's going to be a good game. I have no idea. I we know that's the thing. I don't know any fucking thing about this game. But I at trust all Kojima to justify me wanting to be excited for it. Like I, I'm, it's like I'm intrigued to see what it's about. But from, but from what I've seen, it's just like they show off. It's just it just looks like you're just backpacking these fucking things around. It's just like no, but you see the thing is, is that I I understand where you're coming from, but it's because I know and Kojima's shrouded like, in mystery about the babies and the fucking. It's, it, for me, things. it's because I, I I know that I know I understand where you're coming from, but it's because I know Kojima's work and I trust him to make an actual good game, not a uh, business practice or a business. Um, well, I'm not practice. saying he's gonna make it a business practice. Oh, I, I know he probably won't. right now. It just seems really fucking weird. It's just like it might just be a weird game. You know, it just might just be one of those. It's like, yeah, okay, it's good. But I mean, it's fucking weird. I think. Also, getting back to like yeah. uh, a previous, I don't think I said it, but like, uh, well, it's kind of relates back to the topic of uh, like of the state of what's like what sacrifices need to be made for games and stuff. So like, lots of people is like, um, in my opinion, it's just like gameplay or story. It's like what comes first for a game for me. What makes a great game. And what should come first is story number two gameplay or vice versa switch those up it doesn't really matter yeah because if you have incredibly good gameplay and good story that's perfect if you have incredibly good story and good gameplay it's incredibly the only fun. risk is you cannot prioritize story over gameplay because it's a game first and foremost it has to be playable yeah but it's rarely to that extreme where it's a game that, with good story that's unplayable yeah. but i'm just saying technically that can be a possibility it a game possible. a game is a game so it must have gameplay yeah first and foremost and good gameplay hopefully and then i would say yes definitely story yeah um y the only thing that they have to do and i talk about this in my pecha kucha is that 
if a game focuses too much on graphics, it, it, that's dangerous. Like that's, only on yeah. graphics. The Order eighteen eighty six. Initially, I don't analyze enough. I'm, well, try, I'm I trying mean, to get better. That was just a tech demo. I'm trying to get established with the yeah. PlayStation Four. I'm computer. trying to get better at analyzing games, but I find Angry Joe helps to bring me back down to earth a bit. Initially, I kind of fanboyed. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And then he talked about. It, I was like, yeah, this actually makes a lot of sense on how it's a very kind of traditional like bland re rehash story and like how they missed so many opportunities and plots and how the gameplay was so bad compared to what would make an actual gameplay good so it was like basically just a pretty face yeah it was, the, the game was a pretty face and that's and it failed to be a good game like, yeah so like you like in my opinion it's story gameplay first or second vice versa you can do whatever you want yep as uh, long as it has preferably both unless it's just a fun party game or something and then graphics last like not necessarily, like, this is the thing. Graphics like, are can, icing. Graphics are icing, but you need a cake. Because if you just right? have icing, you're going to get a, a cake, scent, right? is, A cake is good without icing on it. A cake can be good without icing on it. That's, that's perfectly fine. But if fine. you just have icing, you might get sick, right? Yeah, but if you just have icing, it's just like, this is fucking terrible. It's like too much. It's too much. But a game can have really fun gameplay, really good story, and have absolutely terrible graphics. This is ruined immersion. It's like... You have to have, it's the thing, you have to have a really good balance and a good even spread of everything in order for it to be really successful. Because, like, at the end of the day, I'll say it's like, if a game doesn't look all that great, that's just as fine for me because if it's fun to play and it's fun to indulge yourself in, that's great. But if it looks fucking horrible, it kind of, like, it really, it does hurt the game. In a way, I don't know, I'm I'm really not in the right in the headspace for talking right now. I'm really fucked. Words not feeling, are hard. Words are hard right now. I'm aching all over. Oh, you got the shakes? Or not the shakes, but the aches. Yeah. You sleep so well though. Oh my oh, gosh. I, beds I could feel. I can sleep so right good. now. Thing is, I got too much. Yeah. When you're when you're sick, beds feel so good. Oh my gosh. I wish the weekend was a day longer. I know. It feels like it goes by too fast. Just a day, that's all we ask. So, okay. Just another day. Yeah. I will, gla- like, this thing, I would gladly, because right now we have one class on Mondays and one class on Fridays. I would love it if there was no class on Mondays and you just put those two classes in the same day. I would have the eight hour school day. I wouldn't give it. But I would be, yeah, I'll take a Monday. I'll take an entire Monday. Or I can stay up even later on Sunday. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's exactly what I would do. No problem about it. I'm not sure. But I see where you're coming from. I kind of like having minimal classes each day. You know what I mean? I just can't wait to this is the, this uh, be, be work. finished. Like, uh, to be, like, I just want to pass math. I just want to like, finish math class. Just so you get that of a, you know. Because like, I've never, never been a huge fan of math class, you know. I do that. But I, okay, now, to relate back to our, our topic here, I think all this is kind of saddening because um, the fact that the you know it feels like a sad time to be a gamer because we're, we hope to get involved in the industry at some point in the near future, and so it's. I don't kinda, think the industry is going to take a, a, a head dive. No, I'm just saying it's sad to get involved in a time where things suck. Yeah. And right now, AAA things feel like they're sucking compared to in the past. That's why I'm thankful for the indie market because the indie market is part of what's saving yeah. the industry in a lot of ways. Really because is. indie games, I think, are killing it in a lot of ways still. Because like now they're not making as much money, and that's not really the point. They can still make a lot of money. Man. They still make a lot of money, but making. I love your art. It's, it's like making it. Just about making money is not the way to go about anything, especially with games. Because all these people that are just want money, I kind of wish they could just have all the money they w- would ever want just to see if it's really worth it. Like, if that's truly what you the actually thing is, want though, in life, you know what I mean? It's Sure, it's easier to make a quick buck here and there, like they're just doing minimal effort, like but you get a lot of money for it. But if you made an incredibly good game, lots of people would be... Like, like if the next Elder Scrolls game came out and it was, like, theoretically the... like perfect in every way like there was no fault to it the only problem with it is that it had loot boxes in it i think i might be like yeah all right i'll spend money here you go like fuck i have a feeling that bethesda would probably do the best loot boxes <laughs> just with all the stuff they i have don't know games. i don't know man i don't want them to just because that's not bethesda's thing or should it be bethesda i just feel like loot boxes are just like the fucking bane of my existence at the time even like games like overwatch i'd much rather just like burn them rather than just randomly unlock I don't it mind it in Overwatch because it affects so little of the game. <laughs> I don't mind in Overwatch either. 
Because it's not like your character customization is literally just your actual character's looks, which you don't look at very often. The thing often is, like, there's all. like with yeah. Overwatch, there is no progression in that game at all. It's, it's all just, just it's, your rank and what you feel like down inside. I respect like, that just because you're continuing to play it because you like to play the game. Like games like Team Fortress Two as well, where like yeah, there's items, but in reality, you could use the base items and still do really well. And it's be, a lot of times you play. Yeah, sure, you might play it to get like a new hat or whatever, but a lot of times you keep playing it. Because you enjoy playing, and yeah, sure, you're gonna do like these like trials or whatever, like to get other other items. Like items are part of helping you to keep on to play it sometimes. Yeah. But I think I just feel so strongly with games like like that and Overwatch that you play it because it's a good game. You like playing it. And I think that uh, games that or when when people think that a good game depends on your progression and what you can unlock, I feel that like yeah, well that can be true. It feels like we're kind of missing the point of what makes a good game because like Metal Gear Solid Three. I wouldn't really call that a game with unlockables. Like, yes, you could get stuff, items in the story, but, like, I'd say a lot of times what makes you want to go back and replay it is just the fact that it's a good game, not because it has a progression system that necessarily draws you in, you know? Like, I'm trying to make a reference to unlocking your guns in Call of Duty, you know what I mean? Like, what would it be like if they just gave you all the guns? Would you get bored of it faster? You know what I mean? Right, yeah. So then are you playing it just because there's a progression system that just leaves you wanting more? Or are you playing it because it's a legitimately fun game? That's what I think the difference is. And I think it's important to have a game that you just love to play. And that's why you keep playing it. Not just because you just want to unlock something. Yeah. Because then once you unlock that something, well, then what do you do now? You know what I mean? Like, it's like... It, yeah. I, you could compare that to Destiny, you know? It's like, what happens once you get the raid gear? You know? Do you keep playing? Or do you just yeah. dive off? Is the only reason you're playing just to get that raid gear for some reason? You know what I mean? I guess maybe sometimes to prepare for the next expansion, we're just going to have to do it all over again or something. I don't know. Games are in a weird place sometimes. They really are, though. Yeah. So what are your final thoughts? Uh, it's sad. There is some sad. There is some good. But it feels like there's too much sad compared to the amount of good right now. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Alright, well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, please like, subscribe, and whatever. <laughs>